This podcast is not affiliated with any Grand Lodge, and the ridiculous antics and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own. It should be dismissed immediately. Now we're finally That ready. took a minute. <laughs> wow. Hey, that was a pretty cool intro. That's new. That was nice. Dave. Yeah. Oh, so the uh, the intro that you all just heard and maybe saw, mm-hmm. um, the, the video was put together by our esteemed producer. There we go. Got to come up with a new word every time. <laughs> uh, however, the music was very graciously donated by Brother Eric Bensala, mm-hmm. who is our guest tonight. Um, and his band, Average as Poets. So thank you very much. For yes, thank you. Kind of yeah, a, thank you. One of a kind piece of work. And made a great will, intro. We will keep it and cherish it forever and name our kids after it. Right on. Well, Perfect. He might. I will. Hey, I'm, I'm sterile, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. The guys would love to hear it. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it, it's very fitting. It's, it has kind of a mystical sound to it. I, I love it. Yeah, and I've listened to it about 400 times in a row in my truck. So. <laughs> Yeah, it, it started at randomly. We did a show at Blind Dave's Bar in Millard a couple of years ago. We actually recorded it, and we wanted an intro instead of just like the normal intro that they had created. And I was like, "Well, I just did this drum video to the song by Plaid," and they're like, "Do that." And so I did that, and then like I, I was like, "If you wrote something, I was like, I can put something on top of it." And so he wrote that piece kind of similar to that song that I did. So that's why it was. I was like, "All right," I was like, "I can play to that. That's no problem." But it worked out. No, cool. it's I love it. Yeah, it's yeah. great, and the the drum work is so in depth. Like if you if you're listening to it on something that has good audio quality, like there's there's layers and layers to that. Yeah. It's yeah. I like it. Um, so, so, anyways, yeah. so is there somewhere they can see you play? Uh, no, uh, on YouTube, just look up my name, Eric Bensali. You can find me on YouTube. <laughs> got all sorts of videos on YouTube. So yeah, you've you've probably got more money in cameras and lighting than we, we will ever accumulate. <laughs> Be surprised. It's just a bunch of GoPros, a couple cell phones, and the the, the money is really, obviously, it's in the drum kit, and then it's also yeah. in the audio interface that I use. So, so how many how many piece drum kit is that? Well, drum-wise, it's usually about seven or eight, sometimes nine, depending on how many drums I have on the side, but I don't know, it's countless symbols, 13 or 14, something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty awesome it's to watch. Cool. Yep. yep. Um, so here we are, episode six. Yeah, six. Um, I don't really have a toast planned. Uh, we'll toast Eric. We usually catch this at the end. <laughs> um, but Eric has become our very first Patreon uh, max level contributor. Mm-hmm. So thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so there is his shout out by name on camera. What's Shout up? out to me. <laughs> Show's no. over. Yeah. Cheers. Oh. All right. Where do we go from here? Let's find out about him a little bit. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a good thing 
Uh, oh, and we're no longer constricting to an hour. So that being kept in mind, tell us some about your Masonic resume. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I, I had a, a kind of a, for lack of a better term, a mystical experience happen to me in late 2013 that I had this desire to try to figure out whatever it was that happened, whatever feeling I had. And, and it really wasn't anything that crazy. I was on top of a Ferris wheel at Life is Beautiful Festival in Las Vegas, looking out over the high, you know, the high desert, the Nevada desert. And then below me is a bunch of people, you know, at a concert watching Imagine Dragons. Don't can't stand them. But it was just I kind of just <laughs> something hit me, though, that it was like absolute emptiness. And then there's a bunch of people down here. And I was like. Uh, just something, it gave me a certain feeling. And so I got home and started researching all these different books about, you know, mystical things and whatnot, and started going to Worshipful Brother Charlie Odorizzi's store, Next Millennium. Now, of course, at the time, I didn't know who he was, uh, but I was getting a lot of books, reading on all these different things. And after a couple of years, he actually approached me and said, have you ever thought about joining Freemasonry? And my first response was, I don't join clubs, dude. <laughs> and <laughs> I was just that, you know, I, I, was, a, I was a bit of a homebody. Um, I, I didn't, you know, I enjoyed playing in the band that I was in at the time and stuff like that. But I was like, ah, it's like not, I, I had heard about him and whatnot from reading these books, but I was like, mm, it's not really my thing. And, uh, he kept trying and after a while he stopped and then sometime in early 2016, again, he asked and I was like, I was like, okay. And he's like, well, let me give you a book on it. And I was like, oh, okay. Well now you're speaking my language. I love books. I love to read and all yeah. this. And <clears throat> So I go in the next day, and he gives me Freemasonry for dummies, and I kind of felt insulted. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought you were going to give me this, like, world-renowned old text or something like that. And I was like, can I get this Freemasonry for dummies? And I was like, little did you know. <laughs> like, okay. So I took it home, and my wife, Angie, was like, oh, what's that about? And I was like, I don't know, man. I'm like, we're going to find out. And so I think I read, like, two or three pages, and I just kind of stopped, and I was like, I don't, no, I don't. I'll just do it, but I don't want to learn about it. I want the experience to tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. And because I had started reading things and I, the, I got this feeling, I was like, I feel like I'm going to spoil something if I read this. And I was just like, you know what? What's the worst that could happen? And I was like, fine. So I went back and I said, yeah, you know what? I'll do it. So they gave me a petition, turned a petition in. Uh, and you know, I, I went through back in the old day, we were short form. So it was like mm -hmm. the first week was always a business meeting. Then it was EA fellow craft master Mason and every month it was that way. So I go through, but I, I'll even say now that we have a little bit of time, I can tell a funny story about my, <laughs> my EA degree. Uh, I won't give any details away, but I was sitting in the room where they were getting us prepped and it was me and another guy. And I didn't know that that was a thing, but I also didn't know that you could go by yourself too. <clears throat> and the other guy was a little bit more heavy set than I was um, by a significant amount. And he was very uncomfortable in the garb. And all of a sudden, uh, this guy comes in. I'll try to remove some names here, but this guy comes <laughs> in and basically like the, the other candidates wearing a, a like some sort of like yarn or something like that. And he's got a crucifix, a wooden cross, or excuse me, cross, wooden cross on it. And he goes, you have to take that off. You can't wear that. And, and I'm like, Okay, because I, I read the whole thing, you know, not supposed to have metal or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. And I was thought, uh, it's, technically it's wood, but <laughs> whatever. And yeah. the guy got lost it. He got so <laughs> mad. And he was just, and then he started getting into, he's like, you know, you embarrass me with this outfit. And this guy over here has got nothing on him. And he's just sitting there. And I'm just like, oh, oh my gosh, what's happening? <laughs> and at first I thought, I thought, wait, is this part of it? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out, no, it's not part of it. But... <laughs> So eventually he just basically got up. He told the guy that brought him in. He's like, you know, no hard feelings, but this is not for me. And he left. And then I ended up getting the three degrees by myself. And so I go wow. through all three. And I'm glad because uh, I, I, you know, my own lodge, when I experience, I prefer everybody to get their own degree. Uh, but after, so I keep still to this day, I keep a pretty meticulous journal about what's going on, my feelings, what my thoughts and stuff like that ever since late 2013. And about a week after I had my Master Mason degree, I wrote my journal, it's in there verbatim and says, I am now a Master Mason and I have absolutely no effing idea what that means. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there like, <laughs> I can relate. it was cool, but I was like, but what does any of this mean? Right, I don't, right. I don't understand this. And so the only thing I thought to do is like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show up and Maybe I can learn a part or two. So I start. I would go back 
And I was like, well, I want to learn your, your first couple stations or whatever it was. I didn't know what to call it at the time. And they're like, oh, yeah, you can learn the stewards. And I was like, perfect, I'll do that. So I learned the parts and then kind of tried to pay attention to the floor work and stuff like that. And then it was, you know, this, this was August 2016. So I was raised in late July. And uh, then elections come up and I'm here. Oh, yeah, you usually people get appointed to chairs and this and that. And I'm like, oh, that would be great. I feel like that would be a good opportunity for me to really kind of understand what this means. And then like came and went and nobody <laughs> talked to me. And I was like, but I knew I'd like knew all the way up to junior deacon. And I was like, hmm, all right. And so then the year kind of ends or whatever, and I'm telling Angie, I'm kind of like, well, I mean, it's neat to go and like hang out with the guys and everything. But then at the same time, I'm like, I come home and I'm like, I don't really know what I'm doing at all. Yep. Yep. You know, I don't know what any of this means. And the next year starts. And then honestly, a couple months into it, I, I never got asked to do any parts or anything like that. And I just was like, I don't want to go anymore. So I would end up hanging out with our, who is now our worshipful master, Michael Barnes. We would go to 1912 because our lodge is in Benson. We'd go there and hang out and talk about how we wish, what we wish masonry would be like, a little naively. Um, and but towards so much, really, though. But not, yeah, but not at the same time. It was kind of like that, that's all we knew. You know, we yeah. didn't know anything any better. And uh, at one point, finally, toward the end of the year, the guy that was going to be in worshipful master next year, there really wasn't anybody left. Um, in the line and he was like, I need help. And Michael Barnes was like, cool, I'll go sit junior ward. And they're like, Eric, we feel like you'd be really good at senior deacon. You're very theatric, you're animated and everything. He's like, I think it would be good for you. I was like, no idea what that means. Well, it's sure, let's do it. <laughs> so I learned the parts. And so I got installed as senior deacon in 2018 and found out, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I think it's at one of the most crucial chairs to ever sit um, for anybody. Um, that was my turning point as well. Yeah. It's Senior huge. Deacon. It's a huge spot to take. And it's also incredibly difficult. This is very nuanced. There's a lot of little different things yeah. that you have to learn about it. But I go through that. And then um, I, I'm going to tell you, every year since then, has, there's always been something that happened. But so at the end of the year, it was like, oh, we're all just going to move up one chair. Well, then Michael Barnes was, ended up finding out he's going to have a kid in April of 2019. And he's like, I can't do this. So we backs out and I'm like, but you were my friend. I didn't have anybody else. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's very difficult to like go through masonry by yourself. Yep. You gotta, it's, it's really important to have somebody with you. And I, I, I went back to like the reelection and I was about to tell the guys, I'm like, I'm out, I'm not doing this. And Christian comes up to me and he goes, he's like, I really need your help, man. He's like, I'll do junior warden. Will you do senior warden? I'm like, well, that's a jump. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, but, but I was like, okay, sure. <laughs> Screw it. Let's do it. And so I did that. And then, you know, then that's when I started learning everything. Cause I was like, cause we wanted to do where I was like junior warden conferred EA senior warden conferred fellow craft mm -hmm. master master. And so I was like, all right, fine. I'll learn how to confer fellow craft, um, which would change my life. And November 12th, 2019, I conferred my first fellow craft degree at the time, right worshipful brother, Jim Carlton, who was grand senior warden was there to award Celio Santos, one of the proficiency coins. And saw me confer the degree and whatnot. And I just thought, I was like, oh, that's really cool that he's here and all that stuff. And time passes, 2020 comes, I get elected as worshipful master. And then that whole thing happened in 2020. I don't know if anybody remembers <laughs> uh, COVID. And, uh, but it, like for us, it was, it was awesome. Cause it was like, all right, well, yeah, it sucks. We can't meet, but I could walk to the lodge from my house in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Benson. And so I'd walk up there. We were fixing stuff, rearranging things, cleaning things up. And then that way is like, when, and I also spent that downtime. I just, I was, I started learning the parts that we needed at Mercer. We were missing a lot of stuff yeah. and we had guys that weren't going to come back and some guys that were, you know, maybe might've gone SNPD. And so I was like, okay, we need this part. We need this part and this part. All right, I'm going to learn this one. And then once I learned that one, okay, I'm going to learn this one. Um, and so I, I used the downtime to memorize some lectures. And once we came back, we had a bunch of degrees and whatnot. And then <clears throat> I was, Planning on just going into 2021 as I was like, just going to be like secretary or something like that. I thought I was just <laughs> going to do one year. Um, but unfortunately, Christian's brother passed away. And he was like, I can't mentally and emotionally be able to like do that for the guys. Right. And I was like, all right, I'll do one more year. Now, before I go into 2021, I should back up a little bit into 2020. Because early at, at that annual communication, Christian and I had befriended John Herbelsheimer and Alex Stratman. Okay. Alex Stratman and I were hitting it off because we were talking about bands that we liked back in the day and all this stuff and having a great time. We went out to the bar with him afterward. I'm pretty sure I rode in, in like the hatchback part 
pretty much scrunched <laughs> up. <laughs> um, it was a good time. Um, but that, that had a lasting effect because then at, at one point Alex was in town and I said, I was like, you and John and Christian, you guys should all come over. I'll make some steaks. We'll all hang out or whatever. And this was like right after everything had kind of been lifted with COVID. Mm-hmm. And so they came over and they told me, they said, hey, by the way, we're, we need to let you know that Jim Carlton's going to appoint you to the Grand Lodge in 2021. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like Shh, really? I was like, wait. I was like, was that the guy that like, was kind of explaining what they're like? Yeah. I was like, no kidding. I was like, what? Where'd that come from? Like, I, I've seen the guy once. They're like, well, apparently it was big enough because they were impressed with your fellow craft conferral. And I was like, oh, that? <laughs> okay. So, as, like, as are many. <laughs> well, so that was just like November 12th. I had to go back and look at it. I was like, that day changed everything because then mm-hmm. I ended up you know, in the Grand Lodge and then being a Grand Lodge officer and being Worshipful Master at the same time, um, it's not hard, but it is a lot of work. <laughs> I bet. I <laughs> a bet. lot of things going on. <laughs> um, and we had a really successful year that year. Uh, we ended up, I think, we, yeah, that was the first year we won the Rock Mall, the Lodge of the Year Award. Yeah. And, uh, and the guys, and we weren't even planning to. We were having this thing in like August, this fire pit thing out in the parking lot just hanging out, having a good time. And Christian pulled up the rock mall and he was like, I'm just curious. And he started looking through it and he goes, holy crap. He goes, look at this. He's like, add these points up. And I started adding up and I was like, oh no. I was like, we had, we had something like 780 points. We weren't even thinking about it, but we're like, I was like, we should go for this. I was like, we're doing pretty good right now. And so we, you know, it, it ended up being obviously a pretty good year. And then, um, and it was busy obviously, but you know, I don't, I don't have kids. It's just my wife and I and our two dogs. And so I do have a lot of time, but at the same time, I also appreciate my free time and I appreciate right. not doing stuff. <laughs> um, so I, I always keep keep in mind of that. But I always also like before I get into all the other stuff that I've started doing after that, I want people to understand that like being a Grand Lodge officer is not the experience that I'm having. Like don't <laughs> think that when you become a Grand Lodge officer, you know, you're automatically going to be as busy as Eric Bensal. It's not the case. It's a little bit on a little bit on me for that one. But uh, self-induced. Self-induced, a bit self-induced. And some of it was also kind of voluntold, like the band camp. Ah. Um, so well, I, I can guarantee you that number one on behalf of everybody at beehive we appreciate the help that you give us every time we do it yeah, yes for sure yes. you've been there at almost every one and and kind of you were kind of my first experience of having a grand lodge officer in lodge because mm. i spent so many years out mm. of lodge right yeah. um when i came back it was when we started really pumping the guys through degree work mm-hmm. um and i think you were there for the first one oh right on and i you know, it was the first time I'd seen the big necklace, oh, the- and I was like, this guy's got his shit together. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, I had a hard time recognizing him when he pulled up outside tonight, because I think this is the first time I've seen him in street clothes, not in a Grand Lodge <laughs> yeah, officer's. Sort of. Yeah, I, <laughs> me too. Right? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think we might have saw you in street clothes when we got off the elevator at Grand Lodge. Oh, on yeah. Thursday night. That could have been, yes. Yeah, yes. Thursday night. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty rare occurrence. That, that, that's a thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. I thought about it, too, when I was coming here. I was like, I don't think they've ever seen me in street clothes. <laughs> it's going to be weird. It's going to be like, right, yeah, see? I'm a regular guy. I wear clothes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I don't go to bed in suits. Which, by the way, before I forget, I, I have this notepad so that I can write stuff down because <laughs> my short-term memory is gone. But a holy cleanup at Grand Lodge. For accolades and yes. oh. Freemason of the Year. Yep. Right? Yeah. The Demole uh, Mason of the Year thing that the youth put together. Yeah. 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 That was that was a very special presentation, I, I felt. Yeah. I, I had no idea about it, um, which is how I like it. I don't like to... Some people have known that that was coming for them because they kind of ask around a little bit, but right. I didn't really think about it. And... Um, and, you know, it, it's funny because then, of course, I start going back and thinking about, like, the text messages John Herbelsheimer was texting me about. He's asking me, he's like, yeah, tell me about your time as Rainbow Dad. And I was like, <laughs> okay, sure. And just, you know, because, like, sometimes I can be real stupid and I'm just not paying attention. I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. And I'll just answer the question. I'll put the phone back down. Just yeah, don't me, think anything me. of it. He was it, basically helping Caleb write his speech. <laughs> time. I was like, if that's where I, like, I was looking at John when he started talking. And I'm like, what can I be that way for? Like, John, because John was like, smirking. You know, I was in the South and I was sitting there and I was like, what are you doing? And then all of a sudden, within like a couple sentences, I was like, 
Oh, that's me. That's the text message. <laughs> I was like, that, oh, oh no, this is about me. And, you know, I, I, I care deeply for the youth. I And I love Caleb to death. Caleb Maloshek. Shout out to Caleb Maloshek. Great dude. Um, and so to get an award, I mean, even if it was the, the, the membership in Nebraska that would have done it, that would have been an, an incredible honor. But coming from the youth, like, that meant even more, and I'll be honest. Like I, I kind of started choking up a little bit, and I, uh, you know, I didn't want to be that guy, so I fought it back off. I had to right. be the man about it or whatever, but, <laughs> but it was, it, it was real touching, and you know, I'm, I'm close with Abby Pickle that was up there too, just from my time in Rainbow mm-hmm. and whatnot. So it was, it was a neat experience uh, to get that. It, like, I don't even know that humbling is a, like the right word. It was just like, damn, like. Thank you. <laughs> just very grateful for it. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Like I said, it was a, it was a definitely it was a special experience. I mean, it was it was neat. I think everybody in the room felt it. Yeah. Yeah. It it was cool. It was a, uh, I you know I couldn't thank him enough for it. And uh, no, I was honored to be able to to be able to I guess impact their lives that way enough. Yeah. That they right. Felt that right. you know what we want to want to celebrate that. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. But well, I think everybody in the room had that feeling went. Yeah, he deserves that. Oh, definitely. You, you know, you could you could feel the the, the warmth of the, of the crowd thing. Yeah, we know what Eric does. He definitely deserves it. So it was. It was yeah, a, I appreciate sure. that. I so mean, he actually gets something done besides make the rest of us look but really bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, you know, like in the whole like involvement with youth thing was like it was not something. None of this was ever anything that I like sought out to go do. It just mm-hmm. kind of you know. That's that's been kind of my mo my whole life with a lot of different things, is like just kind of like oh this seems interesting I'm gonna keep going down and then if it stays interesting I stay engaged in it or I like it I'm like oh, I'm gonna keep doing this thing then um, I have a problem that when I like something then I like put 100 percent yeah. of myself into it um, until it becomes a normal thing and just like an, as natural as breathing. Uh, which is good and bad. It's not great on the front end. I know a couple guys like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Episode six. <laughs> yeah. So when like the news had come out in late 2021 about Michelle was leaving, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh no, what about band camp? They're like, we're going to have the committee do it. And I wasn't on any of the committee for that or anything like that. I had gone, I was a chaperone in 2021 for yeah. that year. It was just, that was my first year doing it. Didn't know what was going on. And I ended up helping the drumline a little bit because I had a, some, you know, I've been playing drums for a long time and I did drumline in college and whatnot. And I had a good experience. I was like, yeah, you know what? It was reasonable enough. I'll, I'll go do it again. And then that happens. And they're like, Eric, do you want to be on the committee? I was like, sure. That sounds, you know, I like band. I'll be on the, yeah, that sounds good. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not what happens. Um, we got him! Yeah. And so I get on the first meeting, it was like uh, a week or so after annual communication in 2022. And I get on the first meeting and I can, like, two people dropped off because they're like, Michelle's not doing it, I'm out. And I was like, oh, this oh. is a bad start. And <laughs> then everybody else like, it's kind of like, well, what do we do? Like, they're like, we want to help. We want to do this thing. And Michelle's like, well, Eric's going to help. And it turned into like, Eric's going to do it. And so I tried to, it was really, it was like laying the train track while the train's moving at the same time mm-hmm. that year. It was very difficult. It was a lot of work and we had a lot of trials and tribulations trying to figure things out. Poor Jenny Danner was trying to read kid handwriting which is awful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the paper, all the, and sometimes kids would send in like four duplicate applications and it was just, it, it was a mess, but we got through it and, you know, and it was like, okay, I did it. All right. This worked. And I would tell that for those first six months of 22, it was like a whirlwind because the annual communication happened and, you know, get installed as grand historian. Uh, I'm still kind of a new deputy grand custodian, I'm also now secretary of my lodge, um, which has temple craft because we, we rent out the hall. So it was just like, I got, everyone was like, do you want more? Here. It's like Scott, uh, most worshipful Scott Krieger always said, he's like, you know what the, they re- how they reward people who do a good job? And I was like, what? And he goes, more work. More work. Yeah, more work. And I was like, oh, thanks. Could have told me that a long time ago, man. That's why um, I'm not very busy. <laughs> so... Uh, once it was over though, it was like, okay, I felt better. And that was actually also my first year as rainbow dad. Cause that was something that Roger Manley, he's like, he's kind of like him and John diamond at, uh, Mercer are like, they're like our, our elders, our wise fathers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we called John diamond jokingly 
lovingly rather, but the professor. Okay. He oh, looks like very, a professor, and he's this yeah. very, you know, he's calm and he's collected. Um, but R Roger had been like Rainbow Dead for a long time. He was an officer for like 22 years in a row at Mercer. So it was like, we we're trying to give him breaks and stuff. And I was like, you know what, Rainbow Dead? And I was like, kind of sounds like fun. Because when you're a worshipful master at Mercer, you're automatically on the board for Rainbow Dead. Mm -hmm. there. So I was like, you know what? That sounds, that sounds good. And he goes, really? He's like, did you read the bylaws? And I was like, no. And he's like, no, no. He's like, that's fine. That, go ahead and do it. And I, was, I was like, <laughs> come to find out I read them later. It's not really a big deal. The only, the only weird thing was like, basically, you kind of are it until you find somebody to replace you. <laughs> and nobody stepped up. And so that's where it ended up working out for me. Um, and so I had Rainbow Dad, Band Camp, Secretary, Grand Lodge Officer, and Deputy Grand Custodian all happening at the same time. And... <laughs> At work, I had just launched the energy education program that I had built. <laughs> oh, and, and by the way, you still have a wife and a home and uh -huh. dogs. Yeah. There's a personal life somewhere in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, it was, uh, you know, first six months of that year, it was a, it was a lot. I started getting gray hairs um, solely from band camp, from the stress of it. <laughs> uh, and the rest of the year, you know, ended up being just fine, worked things out. Unfortunately, Christian ended up um, not finishing his term. Um, for a variety of different reasons. And so Ben Zayer stepped up and kind of finished out the year. And um, I said, you know, I'd do secretary one more year, but you guys got to separate this temple craft business out. I was like, I need a break. Yeah. I need a break somewhere. And I thought, oh, okay. You know, and then Millington called me and said, hey, I'm going to, I'll have you be grand marshal next year. And I was like, awesome. Like, because his grand historian doesn't really have a lot to do except maybe take some pictures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But grand marshal, it's like coordinating cornerstones, lodgery dedications, and then you're also basically herding cats. When, yeah, you got to yep. get the officers in line and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I was like, that sounds like fun. I was like, I could do that. And I thought, 2023, I'm going to get a little bit of a break. I got band camp, but, and I remodeled it. I was like, I've got this advisory committee, and then I have the planning committee, the ones that are going to do the stuff and the ones that can help us advise us on what's going on. I was like, it's going to be good. Nope. It got worse. <laughs> it got way busier. <laughs> uh, so secretary was fine or whatever, but I was still rainbow dad. And camp was going fine and then unfortunately jenny danner had just it was too much and she's like i can't do this anymore i have to quit and it was right about the time that uh the students were starting to do registration oh. and so she was in charge of the students <laughs> so i took that on and it was the three of us myself brenner beers and joe Haggerty, and that was it was i'd work eight nine hours at work and not to mention also teaching you know, having to leave and go teach kids and stuff like that, which right. I mean, shout out to the teachers. Cause like, even after like two back to back hour classes, I get home and I'm like, how do they do that for eight yeah, hours yeah. a day? Yeah. Five days, like, wow, <laughs> like that's impressive. But then, yeah, it would be like, I work eight, nine hours a day, close that laptop, pull out my Chromebook, open that and go to work on band camp until like nine, 10 at night oh. every day. Man. And because it was also, it was a thing of like, I enjoyed doing it. It, it. Band camp wasn't hard. It was a lot of work. It was a yeah. lot of time. And it was just kind of, you know, I wanted to make sure that the students were having a safe experience, a good experience, and one that they was memorable and that they'll want to come back and that everybody else was doing it, was having a good experience. And so we made some changes, you know, going paperless, which goes really well in the Masonic yes. world, by the way. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, that's a joke. <laughs> it does not come to find out. So, uh, so that, you know, once camp was over, um, the two girls I was real close with that were junior band assistants. So they looked at me and said, Eric, you look like shit. And I was like, I need a break. <laughs> I need a break. So I got to go home and I got to rest a little bit that week. And then that weekend I had grand assembly for rainbow. So I had to go up to right. South Sioux city. And I thought, ah, oh, you know, I got some relaxation time. I had my own hotel room. It was nice. I had a good time. And I, I, I love hanging out with kids. And that last day, I'm talking to Jim Carlton, and at the time, you know, the proficiency coins. So I used to be in charge of them for the city, for Omaha area, basically, like, pre-testing people and awarding them. And then I was like, that will, yeah, that was the other thing that I had in 2023. I was like, yeah, <laughs> Jim, please take this from me. I cannot do this right now. Uh, and so he was like, yeah, what, um, you know, when do you think uh, you might want to get the coins back? I was like, I, I was like, let me just, once I get back into Omaha, I just got to finish this week, and then I'll take the coins back from you. And five minutes later, they're like, State Rainbow Dad for 2023, Eric Bansala. I go, you're keeping the coins. <laughs> 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 it's like, just kidding, you're keeping the coins. I now have this, um, which was an awesome honor. But, like, I was actually looking at the list of the guys that were uh, State Rainbow Dad, and I was, like, looking, I've seen all these guys. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm done, I'm done. I was like, I was like, oh, I was like, I'll be all right. 
that. <laughs> but it's it's been a fun experience. Um, it, and and I, I, obviously, I still I love Rainbow to death, um, and I'll do it as long as I can. Um, obviously, in four years, I won't be able to do it, but um, <clears throat> not as active, I should say, sure. as I am now. But uh, but that was good. And then um, I guess I should talk about how I even got into the advancing line. That was an interesting experience. <laughs> normally, of course, normally things happen is like the deputy grandmaster. I mean, you, I, throughout time, there's, you know, you're looking at guys, you're seeing, you know, who does well, who's got great leadership skills, you know, how are they interacting with other brothers, um, things of that nature. And, but usually the deputy grandmaster, hopefully within like at, at, a, at the maximum of the first half of the year, first quarter of the year, knows who they're going to end up picking for their year as their mm -hmm. appointment to the advancing line to be grand junior deacon. Um, so in, at the March all committee meeting in 2023, we all show up there and getting ready to do this and that. And I noticed Mike Stewart wasn't there and. I, I had formed a really close relationship with Mike Stewart. I love the guy to death. He, I, he's got a lot of involvement with the youth as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't there. And so I texted, I was like, oh, shoot, Mike, I guess I'm, gonna, I'm not going to see you tonight. And he sent me a reply back that was kind of cryptic. And I was like, what's going on here? I'm like, what? what? Like, yeah, I'm going to see you again. That's weird. Like, first I was like, oh, no, is he sick? And I got nervous. And so I just, it was kind of on my head a little bit. And I was sitting there with Kurt Wolbert and Darren Kislin talking about leadership and I noticed all the advancing line guys were in this room off to the end. And I was like, mm. what that has to do with Mike? And all of a sudden, Bruce, ba Bruce Baker comes out, comes over to me, goes, they want to see you in that room. <laughs> Wait for the magic light. <laughs> Come on, Verizon 5G. <laughs> and we're back. A little bit of technical difficulty. All right. All right. It was telling me, Eric. Eric speeded up. No, so to, to retell the, the story, so I was at the all committee meeting. I was sitting with the leadership uh, committee at the time, just kind of talking about stuff. And then uh, Bruce Baker comes out of the room, comes up to me, and he goes, he's like, hey, they want you in that room back there. They want to talk to you. And I was like, Bruce, this better be good because, like, dude, the last time I, this happened to me, I ended up with band camp, which is it's fine. But, like, I can't have another band camp right now. So yeah. go back in the room, I sit down, I'm looking around, and everyone's kind of, like, looking at me, like, smirks and stuff. And I'm like, this is a little awkward. And then Millington just cuts to the chase. He's like, well, Mike Stewart has stepped out. And, you know, so that actually kind of pushes everybody up, at least at a minimum for the following year. And we've all decided that we're going to put you in the advancing line. And so your year would be five years from now. And it was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll do it. And they're like, Did you need time to think about it? No, like, nope. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. You know, like I try not to think too much about stuff. So I'm like, it's just, yes. I'm just going to say yes. Everything else has worked out fine just so far. So yeah, absolutely. You know, it was, it was, I, and I was honored to do it. So, um, and since you can't hold two offices, it was like, it was really just a confirmation of like, I'll be involved in all the advancing line meetings for the rest of the year. Yeah. And, um, and getting to know everybody and whatnot and getting up to speed. And then I still had my grand marshal duties for the year. So, um, but yeah. And then, so, so what, what year are you grand master of Nebraska? 2028. 2028. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. A little, little ways to go, but there's a, you know, you think it's like five years is a long time, but it's like now in it, learning about it, you know, at some, at, when I become deputy grand master, there's a, I don't have to approve the budget and learning all that stuff. It's like, this makes sense. Yeah. You got it. You really, there's a lot to learn on the way up. Um, and just like masonry too, you know, I mean, obviously it's a part of masonry, but it's like, you will get out of it what you put into it. If you aren't paying attention, if you aren't, you know, mm -hmm. staying up to, up to speed with everything that's going on, you're going to have a rough year. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 But yeah, but great so far. Good. So I was going to ask in your Family tree, is there any legacy? Are you first or? Only one. Only one. My grandmother's second husband was a past master of Prince Hall here in Nebraska. Okay. Um, and that's the closest. But no no blood relatives, nothing. I'm the only one. <laughs> it's just <Yeah>. me. <laughs> so, and, it, and I don't have any kids, so it'll stay that way, I guess. Well, it's a good thing you got a lot of brothers. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a lot of brothers now? That's right. That's right. Oh, cool. Yeah. What else do we want to ask him tonight? Well, is that the guy that never says anything? <laughs> well, I guess we kind of touched on number two. Let's see. It's, it's not even that far away, dude. I, I know. <laughs> I'm still blind. It's, it's a fairly large one. Yeah. 
Um, Christ, just pick yeah. one, will you? <laughs> what have you learned while being a Grand Lodge officer since 2021? So the now again, it's you know you get out of it what you put into it, but traveling. So I travel a lot. I like to obviously I've been to Beehive numerous times, and I love you guys there. And like I've traveled a lot in Omaha, but then I've, I've gone to some lodges in Lincoln. But I've even gone all the way out to Kimball, Nebraska, and gone to James L. Eatman Lodge for a Master Mason degree, actually in 2021. Um, but traveling to all these different lodges as much as humanly possible, as much as I can, that's been one of the most rewarding things about being a Grand Lodge officer. Because whether I'm just there to, and I'm more than happy to just go and hang out. I'm all, just as much as I'm happy to go and help with a part or go for a degree or something to that effect. Um, but you really get to see what the face of Nebraska masonry looks like as a whole. It's a, it's a mosaic, you know, yeah, like how yeah, those where yeah. it's like a mosaic and it makes a picture of somebody, but it's built mm -hmm. up of all these other little pictures right. in it. That's really what Nebraska Freemasonry is. And it's, you know, I've, it's, we all, we've all heard that Rural Nebraska masonry is different than the the city of, you know, whether it's Kearney or it's Omaha or Lincoln or whatever. <clears throat> and that's true. But it's not they're still doing the same thing. They're still teaching the same ritual. They're still doing the same work. But it has it's not done differently. It has a different flavor. flavor. It has a different energy to yeah. it. And especially when you meet the guys, whether it's the candidate or brothers that are going <laughs> that are that are doing the degree work, uh, it that's been probably the most rewarding thing is to just see and meet these guys have been doing it for decades. I yeah. haven't even been a Mason for a decade. Like, so seeing these guys have been doing it for so long and the passion that they give toward it, it's, it's inspiring and it's really cool to just be a part of that, to mm -hmm. just be able to see that and meet these guys. <clears throat> but um, yeah, you get to see a lot of really interesting, and it's not just because I'm a Grand Lodge officer, but it, because I was one, I was like, I should be, I wanna travel more. I, have, I wanna go and right. see all this other stuff. And we still, you know, Christian and I did it quite a bit in 2019 as wardens. We would travel a lot. Um, and we created the whole Traveling Brothers of Mercer. We call it T-Bomb. And so they actually, we have like official thing. That's our official thing. We go T-Bomb people. Um, and, uh, but so traveling, and again, I know that the traveling man is a part of the whole Freemason uh, mystique. Right. right. And it's like, right. there really is a huge benefit to traveling and meeting other guys and just, Hearing other people's perspectives, which this, what you're doing with the podcast is a fantastic way of doing that too, especially if you can't travel all the time because my car just hit 120,000 miles. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, it's a lot of miles, but, but it's awesome, you know, and especially the, the thing for me with masonry is that the journey is the goal. Yeah. There is no goal. Yeah. I don't do like, I never thought, oh man, I want to be proficient. I just had kind of gotten there. I was like, oh, I guess I could do that. It was like, I didn't want to be a Grand Lodge officer. It was like, oh, I was doing things that kind of got me there. Mm -hmm. I didn't, the, the closest I came to being like, this is something I want to do was Rainbow Dad. Cause I was like, that sounds like fun. I think I want to do that. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, for the most part, it's like, I just try to enjoy the experience. Cause I think that's where everything is at. That's where the whole, the yeah. whole of masonry is inside the experience. It's right. not, at, it's not the end of it. And I'm, I'm very similar, a little different. I, I like to set a goal. Like one of my, my personal goals just to kind of prove to myself that I could do it was to be a master of lodge. Mm -hmm. But that having that in mind, it's time to enjoy the journey of getting there. And then once I'm the master, then I'll set another goal and enjoy the journey onto that one. Mm -hmm. You know, it was so I, I realized how important the journey was the the first time I hiked Pikes Peak. So the bar trail, it's 13.1 miles. Wait, so hang on, you hiked that? Huh? <laughs> My wife and I did, and then I did it by myself after that. <laughs> uh, what, was it, what, you yeah. saying the second one was more quieter or just uh, more peaceful? The second one was, oh. was faster. <laughs> okay. No, she, she will she'll admit it 100%. Because it, it actually, so the, the, the funny story about it is like we had driven up the year before. Actually, I think it was, it was, two, it was 2021. Yeah, we had driven up the year before because we always go somewhere every year. Usually Colorado. This year we're going to Palm Springs, California. But to just kind of get away for you know, a yeah. week or something like that. Yeah. And we love to hike. And so we were like, we drove up Pikes Peak. And anybody that's done that, it's actually kind of terrifying. It is. You're yep. on these turns. There's nothing there. It's like it's you and or death. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and when we, and like whenever I would turn this way, Angie was like leaning into the car. <laughs> she's just like not. Look, I'm like, we're in, it's, I was like, it's okay, it's okay. So she's like, we, let's hike it next time. She's like, I see some people hiking up, coming up here. She's like, let's just hike it next time. I was like, okay, that sounds great. And I'm looking it up, and I'm like, oh, and I'm finding videos, and I'm like, 
Oh, it seems like it's reasonable. Okay, it's way harder than that. <laughs> it's just the problem is it's not necessarily the length. The length is really not a big no. deal. 13 miles is not bad. But when your elevation gain is over 7,000 feet, right. you're constantly going up. Yeah, yeah, and, that's a lot of stairs. <laughs> oh, so we made it all the way up. Like, and after the first two miles, which we did in the dark with headlamps and whatnot, because you got to start early. Mm-hmm. Um, we we're like, oh, yeah, it's really pretty. And then you actually get into like the mountain, like into the mountain range itself, and that's where it gets boring because there's nothing to see. It's just <laughs> basically tree. There's not that much wildlife. I mean, at the time that we went in late September, uh, and. We got to, to, to bar camp halfway and we had our food and whatnot. And I got some water and from the stream and we're like, all right, well, I was like, do you want to go back down? Cause Angie was like, I hate this. <laughs> She's like, I, this is not entertaining <laughs> to me at all. And I'm like, I know I'm like it, but it might hurt your knees more going down. Yeah. I'm like, should we just finish it? And she's like, yeah, let's just finish it. So, which <laughs> it's way harder this way. Um, so we get up to this point, you get to like, nine and a half miles and there's a sign that says this is the turnaround point if you can't do it and i'm like at nine <laughs> 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 yeah. like, we're, why not at bar camp <laughs> um and so we're i was she's like no I, yeah i got it let's just, let's just keep going i was like oh okay so once you get above the tree line then then that gets hard because now you're at le- you're like eleven thousand feet mm-hmm. and so the air obviously gets thinner you go through your water faster and it's significantly colder. It gets colder. We actually had a snowstorm at one point that was starting to roll in on us. Um, but I remember about mile 11 or so, I just hear Angie just stop and she goes, I can't do it anymore. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I just turned around. She's like leaned up on a rock like this. <laughs> just done for. And I was like, I, she goes, just leave me here. Just go to the top and just send somebody back down. I was like, no, 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 no. This is how horror movies start. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is where you die. And so I was like, no. So I... I, I reduced my hiking poles and I put them behind me. I said, just grab onto these and just use my, I'll pull you. So use that momentum to kind of help get you moving. And I did that for the next three hours up the rest of the mountain. And I was thinking about in one of our lectures, it talks about fortitude, one of the cardinal virtues. Yeah. And I was just sitting yeah. there thinking, and I'm like, just pushing and pushing. Cause I kept getting, there were a lot of times where I was like, I I'm know, done. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> but I was like, but man, I give that lecture and I make this big point about fortitude. I would be a liar if I didn't finish this. <laughs> And so I did. I got to the top and we both laughed about it and this and that. And then I was just like, you know, we were both like, never again. That was the worst experience. And even all the other people that were in the shuttle with us going back down, they're like, yeah, it was so bad. I don't know what people do this. And we're like, yeah. yeah. And then like two months later, I was like, I'm going to do that shit again. Yeah. I was like, I think I'm going to go back next year and do it myself. And she was like, why? Why? And I was like, I was like, I actually felt fine on the mountain. I was, I didn't like it when I got done. And I was like, I think it's there. And so then I went and I did it by myself. I did it way faster. <laughs> um, I just moved faster. But uh, when, when I got done again, I was like, man, like kind of wanted to go back on the mountain. Yeah. And, I was, and that's where I kind of really realized that it's like the, the, the journey is the goal. Right. Like the, the, the process is where it's at. You know, like yeah. getting the proficiency pin. All right, that's neat or whatever, but that doesn't do anything. But the work that I did to get that and the work that I do to maintain that, that's where like the experience is at. That's where mm-hmm. like to me where masonry, is, a part of masonry is at. So, yeah, yeah that's my dragging Angie <laughs> up <at> Pikes Peak. <laughs> so, dragging Angie, what, uh-huh. what's the role of the Lady of a Grand Lodge officer? Yeah. So it, it kind of, it just depends on the who the grandmaster is and his lady um i know uh most forceful john ferguson and liz they have a, kind of a more traditional perspective toward it um and so it really comes down to a lot of it is like at, you know communication about setting stuff up getting you know putting the decorations out getting the the, the banquets and whatnot ready they have a, a few meetings here and there they usually have if we're having a meeting during annual communication a lot of times the ladies have one right but a lot of times too it's also like just kind of accompanying uh the grand lodge officer to events like if we get invited to you know banquets or other dinners or um or outings that like we have a, an annual grand lodge officer retreat right. they come to that um you know they'll hang out i know the a lot of the advancing line ladies are really close to each other um they're all pr- pretty close in age too but uh it's definitely not as much as ours on the work that we have to put right. into it. Um, but a lot, you know, a lot of it is just kind of like 
you know, if we have a cornerstone, obviously the ladies are invited because it's a public ceremony. Same thing at a lodge dedication, but um, they don't really, there isn't, I don't know that there's a Grand Lodge officer lady handbook. If there is, I haven't seen it. <laughs> um, but it's, a lot of it just kind of has to do with just, you know, setting things up, preparing things, hanging out, that okay. kind of thing. So it's really not that much, um, not that much work for the wife. So there you go, brothers. If you're thinking about joining the Grand Lodge line, you know you can let your lady know that, you know, it's minimal what she'll have to do. So That's right. Yeah, right. And yeah, it's, it is, it's, it, you know, even being a Grand Lodge officer, depending on, you know, unless you're something like Grand Marshal or maybe a member of the advancing line or something like that, um, for the most part, uh, you get assigned some lodges to go visit each year, just kind of see how things are going, maybe share what the Grand Master's doing for the year. Um, but uh, in, attend a couple meetings, you're usually like a liaison on a committee as well as being right. on a committee too. But it's really, like I said, it's, don't look at what I'm doing. <laughs> It's not, that's not, <laughs> not typical. It, yeah, that's not typical. Um, it's, it's not that bad. It's once you, you know, if you're going to eventually become grandmaster at some point, then yeah, it starts to become, gets busier and right. busier. But uh, for the most part, it's really, it's doable. Good. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So. Good. <laughs> All right. Wait, me. You, lose, you lose your shirt term? Uh, no. Remember? Oh, okay. All right. Huh. Okay. All right. <laughs> What do you think the best way is to learn ritual? No idea, but I will tell you what has worked for me. Um, and has it worked? <laughs> it has, <laughs> <there's> no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> um, so I think there's two parts to it. There's the, what, there's the work that you do to learn it, and then there's the work you do to maintain it. There's going to be two different ways of doing that's There's two very different ways of, uh, of doing ritual. <clears throat> so the way that I practice it, or the way that it, when I'm learning a lecture or learning a part or something to that effect, I really just take it small piece at a time and I repeat it constantly, but I will never do it for longer than an hour. Okay. Okay. So if I've hit an hour and it's not like oh, 60 minutes, done, <laughs> but it's like, I kind of, I can kind of tell when my brain's like, I think we're done. And then I'm, I'm done for the day and I leave it alone. And that's very important because could I force myself to, I, I, I one time I learned the fellow craft charge overnight and I, the next day I was like, I'm never doing that again. Like, cause I lo lost half of it. Right. So I had to kind of like relearn it. And I was like, that's just not worth it. Cause I had to do it. Cause it's some, a, a lodge needed it. And I was like, oh, I feel like I could get this. And it was like, that would, learn your limits. But so a lot of times I will learn between the punctuation. Okay. So there's a lot of punctuation in the ritual. Yep. So sometimes you see, you'll get, you get a book, by the way, back there, you'll get a book and you look at it and you're like, what? <laughs> there's punctuation. He's, he's, Brother Eric's making reference, uh, I think two episodes ago, um, we kind of teased that I had a, a friend from work that was going to get a petition that night that we interviewed Byron. <laughs> And I'd be happy to report that we actually read his petition in Lodge last night. Yep. So, <laughs> Mr. Gabe has started the journey. Hello. And, and we'll get a book. Yeah. And we're going to do a special episode once we initiate him. Yes. <laughs> so, there, you know, so, I will be like, okay, I'm going to take this one sentence and I will say it over. and oh, I will say it probably 15 to 20 times and then I'll, say, I'll read the next one. I'll say that about 15 to 20 times and I'll go back to that first sentence and I'll start reading that over and over and over. Then I'll just, I basically just kind of start adding Add it on. on. Okay. But I don't work more than usually about it like a paragraph at a time so i always think like i can do a paragraph a day and i always take days off too so okay <clears throat> that's how i learn it and then the other thing that i do though as part of learning it that's very important is i learn it in different places so one mm. I, I learn it while i walk um which so i probably sound like a madman in my neighborhood but <laughs> walking around the book, flipping like this and going <laughs> I, yes, no, wonderful things. Just real, just care a lot about cardinal virtues. Um, <laughs> real passionate about it. <laughs> um, but so, I, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've gotten some looks before. This. But so, I'll, I'll, you, you know, I do it when I walk and then I'll go and do it in the basement. Then I'll go do it at the lodge. I'll do it in the car. And the thing that happens is I, I've noticed that if I learn it in one place, I'm, I'm, very spatial. So I'm so used mm -hmm. to what I'm seeing. I go somewhere else to do it and I'm like, whoa. So when you step into the lodge here. room, it's not a unfamiliar place right. because you've done it other places. So you're not. It's just another scene that has appeared in front of me. 
So that was the problem that I had at annual communication this uh, this past year, where I had to give proclamation, and I had met, I had the line, but I got up there and I looked up and I was like, I have not seen this, and it just went, <laughs> and I was like, well, I just looked, I was like, I don't know what the words are. <laughs> it just left me. <laughs> you know, Dave and I looked at each other, and we're like, holy shit, he is human. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's exactly what yep, I yep. Yeah, it was. So I, I kind of, you know, fumbled through it and I sat back down and Graham goes, I'm glad that was you and not me. And I was like, thanks. I was like, I wish it was you. Right. But no, so doing it in different places is very important. Um, and the other thing that I do, right, is I always read it before I go to bed. Whatever I learned, I read that before I go to bed. Um, so that's how I learn rituals. It, it really, it's just kind of hammering it out, but it's small yeah. chunks at a time and it's yeah. repeating it over and over and over. And once I've gotten it memorized, that's when I start adding in the voice inflection. So I won't stop until I've got the voice inflection for the thing that I've learned. Okay. Cause that's important to me too. Cause I, I am not memorizing words. I have to memorize how to teach it. Right. Right. So it's the intention behind what I'm doing with the word. Now maintaining it is different. Yeah. So I know the, the, the little blue book front to back, and generally speaking, sometime throughout each month, I will go through an entire degree while on a walk, something like that, just so that way I can maintain it. And, you know, and I get asked to do it in lodges and whatnot, so I'll practice a little, it a lot and practice it in different places and whatnot. Um, and I usually practice it every single day a week out. Okay. okay. Over and over, every single day. Now, if it's just a, a part in a chair or something like that, I usually don't have to worry too much about it. But if I'm doing a lecture, it's a different story, especially like the middle chamber or some of those right. third lectures are longer. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to practice that every day for a week out. Um, and the other thing with those two is if I don't have somebody that can read through the book while I'm going through it and correct me on the things that I might have thought that, oh, it's this instead of that, then I will read it before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. Because I know the pattern so well. So like when I do um, lodge proficiencies as a deputy grand custodian or when, I, when we have practices at Mercer, I'm not I don't do the mouth thing. I don't follow along like a lot of people do. Oh, okay. That will mess me up. Oh, I know what it's supposed to sound like. And I can tell if somebody says something wrong, it doesn't feel right. And I'm like, oh, that's the wrong word. So and it throws you off. It throws, so then it's like, ah, okay. So not, that's how I know where to correct. But so when I'm reading it, I'm reading, I'm like, oh, I don't say that word. So it's like, it's, there's a pattern yeah. behind it. So I think the maintenance, the maintenance for me is, you know, conferrals are usually not a big deal. The lectures are the, are the hardest ones mm -hmm. to maintain lectures and the charges. So a lot of times those, I will at, at a minimum run those, all of them once a month. Okay. okay. So <laughs> that, that's funny because on last night on the way to lodge, we read through our lines in the truck on the way down. Right. We read through them again while we were sitting there before dinner. Mm -hmm. And I think I only messed up one little, I need, I needed cued once, I think. Yeah. Maybe, maybe twice, but the rest of it just rolled right off. I just lose my, my train of thought <laughs> just in the middle of it. <laughs> like I got, I got it. And you know, I'll just, I'll just be saying it and be like, I don't know the words. <laughs> yeah. There's been times like I'll just get going and I'm, it's all like brain muscle memory. And mm -hmm. then I'll be in the middle of saying something and I'll be like, man, I am going to fall off the rails soon if I don't, <laughs> if I, I'm like, oh, please like start, like lock it in somewhere. Cause you know, like certain stuff we can do by muscle memory mm -hmm. and like we can do that with words too. But like, I can tell them like, oh, I didn't practice this enough. One little thing and I'm going to be off the rails. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's funny. Cause it, as junior warden, I felt like I never got my lines down. Mm. Like as I could practice it a million times. And with Senior Warden, like I'm not even really that worried about it. And there's a yeah. lot more to Senior Warden. You know, it's the three different degrees. Yeah. Because we're we're lucky we have our, our newest entered apprentice comes to every meeting so yep. far. Um, so to kind of get me off the hook, I only have to do EA for now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just not that big a deal. I don't know if I've just heard it a million times. It, and it's easier to say. I always think of it as like there's a click at some point mm -hmm. when you're learning um, anything, whether it's, you know, learning opening and closing, learning senior deacon, learning a lecture or something like that, that you can have it and you know it. And I've, and I've seen guys that know it, but it hasn't clicked yet where right. it's like, oh, OK, I get it now. 
And I think that's part of, so when I'm mentoring guys and, you know, I got a couple guys under me right now that when we're working through some of the stuff with the questions and answers, I have a guy that he's like, I can't memorize this word. I have no idea what it means. And so we'll sit down and we'll talk about it. We'll define these things. So that way I'm like, this is what we're actually saying. We're just having to be a little snooty about it with some fancy words. So I was like, but this is what it means. Like, oh, okay. And I think to some effect that that recognition, that understanding, that click mm-hmm. um, it happens with some guys that it's like all of a sudden you, when it hits, you're like, oh, okay. I understand God. what I'm saying and that's yeah. just another yeah. word. Yeah. That's my yeah. biggest mm-hmm. advice to him. Yeah. Was mm-hmm. it, don't, don't worry about the words that you're saying. Worry about what you're trying to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's really important um, in conveying the message, um, not only mm-hmm. when you're doing you know, ritual, when you're doing the lectures, like you want to keep people engaged, like Consider it you you teaching yourself too. It's like mm-hmm. one, uh, an author I like always said that like you will know what you know when you have to teach it, and that's why I love it. I'll always go and give lectures because it gives me another opportunity. <laughs> cool. <laughs> oh, all right. Do, do we need to take a break? Yeah. Oh so, yeah, we can. Yeah, we'll take another break and bring out some bring Jason in tonight. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs> you can just... You're the producer guy. Oh, now we're good. Now we're good. Now we're good. Yeah, we're good. Wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, well, we're back. Yeah. Where's, that, yeah. where's that clipboard at? <laughs> Keith has gotten older, shorter, fatter, and balder. <laughs> <laughs> but his eyes got better. No glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Brother Jason, and welcome. Blue, so. welcome. Glad to be here. Everybody remembers Brother Jason. Worshipful Brother Jason. Still bald and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, since you just since you just came to the party, you're up. I'm up. All yeah. right, well, I'm gonna start with the uh, get start with the questions here. Huh? All right, we'll start with uh, what, what's your favorite conspiracy about the fraternity? I hate all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand them. They drive me nuts. But I will say, like, you know, on Instagram, you get you put you click that little search button, and then because I'm a Freemason, oh my god. <laughs> Like the things that people are like, they hashtag Freemason in. I'm like, what? No, come on. Like, it's just it's the silliest stuff. Like, it's the whole, the, 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 the global thing, like that we're mm-hmm. just going to control the world. One <laughs> business meeting and pancake at a time. <laughs> but um, I don't know that I have a favorite one. They all drive me nuts. Um, just because it's, it's so, it's a, it's a, it's very lazy. It's a very lazy way yeah. of thinking. And look, like life is very difficult and also is, at often it's incredibly random right but so we want to try to like put things in there to kind of make sense of it and you know there's always got to be a villain some sort of like high big like mastermind and like you know what there, there probably is to some extent not freemasons though like it's like i really like just go to one lodge function and you'll be like Oh, These guys are taking over the never world. Never mind. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Please, can I go? Like, no. Um, I will say the the whole Illuminati thing is like my favorite because it's like it it all happened. It came back because you know Adam Weishaupt. That whole thing happened in the late 1700s and it lasted like seven or ten years, something like that, and it died out. And it yep. was gone for a couple hundred years. Then it came back, and it came back a lot really strong in the 90s when like all the weird stuff you know internet's starting to happen and yeah. then everybody's allowed to publish a book at this point um <laughs> not saying that people shouldn't be allowed to but now there are some books i'm like some people just shouldn't <laughs> really yeah. like now we have social media I'm like that's that's where people shouldn't be talking yes <laughs> but, um, so but what was happening is like I mean, that's where the, the alien stuff started kicking off and going crazy and all sorts of different things. And uh, and so it was just easy. And then it was just like, oh, yeah, Illuminati. That makes sense. So you know what? It's Yeah, they're, it's the eye of Providence. It's all this. It's, you know, they're they're controlling the world. I'm like, they're everywhere. <laughs> Dude, like I, there's been times I'll be at a, I'll, I've actually in a, a couple instances been like at a bar back when I drank and somebody was like, I was wearing like a square and compass. They're like, you're wearing that out in public? And I'm like, what? Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am. I was like, our lodge has a giant neon on the front of it, right, right away down the street. So, uh, you know, it, it's it, you know, for whatever kind of jokes it might have been, the Dan Brown's book, The Lost Symbol, 
Mm-hmm. I read it before I was a Mason. I read it after I was a Mason. I was like, oh, that's, it's fun. It was a, it, It's a little bit more Scottish Rite oriented, but yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it, but I like there's a part in there where one of the characters basically says that like Freemasonry is not a secret society. It's a society, it's a society with secrets. Exactly. I like, yeah. I was like, that works for me. But yeah, I don't know. The Illuminati thing. I mean, if, I don't know if it's my favorite. They're all just dumb, <laughs> but they're just, they're so silly. Um, and I will say though, like I, I might be a little bit of a curmudgeon when people bring that into Lodge, like as a joke. Oh, yeah. Especially with, if there's like a new guy, I'm like, Ugh, yeah. No, it's not because you never know. All it takes is one guy to be like, wait, uh-huh. really? And then you, yep. yeah, you got a weird thing on your hand, but <laughs> yeah, yeah you, I don't know. You it's, think you're joking, but the new guy doesn't. There's no, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean. You know, I love conspiracy theories. I love reading about them. Um, I'm I'm a big alien guy. I love aliens. Um, I, actually, my coat has a little alien pin on it. Even well, Bigfoot's so. an alien, huh? Bigfoot's an alien. Uh, hey, <laughs> I'm 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 into that idea. I do like that idea. Hey, we'll, we'll talk, we'll talk uh, later. I, yeah. I just picked up a I just picked up a magazine the other day. It's a list of the top secret societies, Freemasons in it. I haven't had a chance to read it yet, oh, yeah. just because I'm curious. But Illuminati, Freemasons. A whole bunch from all over different countries is in there. So I'm kind of intrigued yeah. just to see how close or similar some of these other ones are oh, sure. to Freemasons. And I'm sure it's got a lot of similarities. But yeah. and it's always, I, I, you know, all the conspiracies about Freemasons and then like all the like people talking about it, none of them are Freemasons. Right. It's like, right. I, it's like, come on. You know, but I do like, there was a video I saw one time. Where a guy was like, I, I, I was able to, I escaped the fraternity and all this stuff. And he was alluding to what happens in the third degree. And he's like, I got all these secrets. And, and I'm like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> so I actually had this idea for our PR committee. Um, I might as well say it now. It's kind, of, it kind of an awesome idea. But it's like, hang on, play the breaking news thing when we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, like I had this idea. I was like, we should do like a Grandmaster Reacts thing. Because, like, reaction videos are huge on YouTube right now. So it's, like, the, one of the most popular things. But I'm like, there are so many scenes in movies that have, to, you know, first of all, there's even the TV show, The Lost Symbol. But there's, you know, uh, for example, there was an Oscar movie, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon or whatever it was. There's a scene in a lodge, and I was, and it was, I was like, oh, God, this going to be another one. And people are like, see? And the thing was, it's like, historically, the guy that was played by Robert De Niro was a Freemason. And he got expelled for the things that he did. But... I was like, man, that would be an awesome opportunity to whether it's grand, whether it's grandmaster, deputy grandmaster, or somebody like that, to basically do that reaction video and kind of like educate the public on like this isn't really what happens, this isn't what we do, not give away secrets or anything like that, but like provide an opportunity of education and be like, yeah. this is actually what goes on. I think that would actually be kind of cool. And I taught when I said it to the PR committee, uh, Patrick Smith, who's on it, he was like, that is an amazing idea. I was like, yeah. I was like, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully we'll, we might be able to do something like that this year. We'll see. It'll be cool. Yeah. 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 I love how we're, we're going to take over the world, but we can't even agree how much to charge people for a raffle ticket. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and raising dues by raised, a dollar. Yeah. Or, yeah. And, the world's going to end that way. You oh, know? <laughs> shoot, man. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we made 120 bucks at our breakfast burrito raffle or our fundraiser. <laughs> Got it. We're getting closer, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so just gonna breakfast burrito them to death. I heard they were really good though. They are super. Good. They are super good. It was that. That was my wife's idea because before when we would do BFF, we would do. Um, sorry, Benson First Friday. We we're Mercer's in the creative district of Benson. The, the heart of Benson. The heart right. of Benson. Yeah. And they actually, their storefront is it is one of the uh, bays that we actually rent out that's attached to our building. So. They run this whole creative district show the first Friday of every month. They do this huge, like art displays all up and down the strip. And then during the when it, the nicer months, they actually block off military in front of Jake's and they have vendors up and all this stuff. And so right now we're having them inside the lot or inside the dining hall. Um, but yeah, so when we do that uh, as a fundraiser, we used to actually do plated food like pancakes, eggs, and sausage, which is a lot uh, of <laughs> dishes, a lot of food. And um, Angie was like, you guys should do breakfast burritos. She's like, I will teach you how to make them. Cause she used to work at Amigos for like 11 years in college or something. I was like, all right. It was a hit. It's so much easier. You don't have to clean anything up. Yeah. 
And they yeah. can walk around probably with the burrito and check out everything else. Illuminati burritos. Illuminati. Because of the secret spices. Secret, that's right. Yeah. It's a secret. What are the secrets of masonry? It's the burrito. It's the burrito. <laughs> it's not cilantro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I'm going to hit you with something that you haven't seen yet. All right, cool. And it is, uh, since you're the grand historian, this is something I've always wondered. Is there a tangible tie between Freemasons and Knights Templar? I know the, mm. the disappearance of the Knights Templar and the appearance of Freemasons is the, the timing works out. But I don't know if there's any like documented stuff. So, So I was grand historian, but... I, I'm going to say partially I don't know, because I'm not a Knights Templar. So I went through York, right? But I did not do that part. Mm -hmm. um, I had some my own personal issues with that, uh, with some of the requirements of it. I felt weren't in line with necessarily what Lulash does, but don't mm -hmm. have to get into that. But um, So I don't really know if it is a direct tie or if it's about like the tenets that the Knights Templar stood for aligning with the tenets that we stand for in Freemasonry. Okay. If that's where that connection came with, because it's part of yeah, York, they're, right? So they're very similar. It's very similar. So that's my guess, but I don't, without having actually gone through it, I don't know for sure if that's the case or not. It's a great question though. Something I've always wondered about. Yeah. yeah. So now we gotta ask. We gotta find out now. So, I don't know. All right, then, you're, you're good. Go ahead. I was just going to get to our, our final, I don't want to say our final question, yeah. like we're going to be done, but just yeah. the last one that we had prepared uh -huh. is, uh, I just forgot it. I just looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> Have another uh, drink, brother. <laughs> but uh, what would you change about the fraternity? Like if you, I mean, we try to ask this of all of mm -hmm. our guests. Yeah. Because nothing is ever perfect, but sure. it's kind of perfectly imperfect. I feel. I think you. I think yeah. I think you, we have to. You have to continue to adapt mm -hmm. to the times. You have to adapt to a lot of different things that that occur. But if there was something I would like to see, I don't know. I would necessarily call it change as much as like be added to. Is the jurisdictions working together more often? Like mm -hmm. Nebraska and Iowa working together, Nebraska and South Dakota, or Nebraska and Colorado, like doing more joint type of stuff. So like the only joint thing that we currently do right now is we have a joint dinner with Prince Hall once a year. And that's with the Prince Hall Grand Lodge and the Grand Lodge of Nebraska. Um, and that's, it's nice. I have a really good time. I like meeting some of those guys, you know, uh, uh, you know, no, well, I think we all know Freddie Clopton pretty yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but I think working with some of the other jurisdictions, I would, you know, uh, some of the guys just came back from Cogmean, the Conference of Grand Masters in North America, and they were talking about how they talk to these, this Grand Lodge and this Grand Lodge and this Grand Lodge, and everybody really kind of wants to all like work together and do different things, but there's nothing really in place for that. Okay. So it's like we all operate all, all on our own. I mean, in case anybody doesn't know, it's like there is no Grand Lodge of the United States. It's every state has their, is their own jurisdiction. And I think it would just be a really awesome thing, whether it's a mix, you know, you get like two Grand Lodges together and do a degree or something like that, a bunch of different Grand Lodge officers or something, but, um, or just any sort of event. Uh, but I would really like to see more inter-jurisdictional stuff happening. Traveling is the first, obviously the first step in that. But for me right now, just from what I've seen, that's the only thing where I'm like, we're, that's lacking, I think, in Freemasonry. It's just, there's not a, not a lot of traveling across state lines um, mm -hmm. to see other stuff. And I think that is something I would, I would have, you know, I've only seen Iowa's degree work. Um, hopefully I'll see another lodge soon. I almost had a chance to see a, a lodge in Montana, um, but I didn't have a suit. Or actually I did have a suit, but it was, I wore it because I got married and I was just kind of like, I don't want to wear my wedding. I'm not going <laughs> to So I was just like, kind of like, ah, you know what? But I, I will say that it's really interesting to see other states do degree work, see what they do differently. Um, it's still the same message that's coming out, but that would be my thing that I would like to yeah. say. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Well, I guess Beehive is kind of on the fringe of that, aren't we? So we, two weeks ago, went and witnessed their uh, fellow craft degree. Or Prince Hall fellow craft. Fellow, oh, oh, Prince, okay. Yeah, so Prince Hall's fellow craft degree. So, you know, it's... And actually, I don't even want to give up anything that was different because I, I, right. I, I want you guys yes, to go... Don't. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen one yet. Yeah, I go to a... To. Go visit a Prince Hall Lodge, watch the ritual. Yep. And we're actually, um, 
we got invited to their master degree, which we hear is vastly different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're super excited about that. But so. but yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to give anything up. Just nope. <laughs> get, get the it. opportunity, do it. Yeah, because absolutely. Seek it out. It, yeah. It's worth it. Just the regular business meetings are... Oh yeah, are unique and uh, mm. and different okay. than and it's uh, they have they have very good. zero problems with grabbing a visitor and putting him to work. <laughs> he did. I mean, yeah, I mean, Austin, yeah, uh, Jason's son was put in as uh, deacon, senior, senior deacon. Senior yeah. deacon. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, yeah, they needed help. Oh, and, they, and, they, and they went. They went with him. They, you know, they taught him how they do it, and it's it was fascinating. Yeah, it was a it was a great honor uh, for him to do that. And yeah, then, he had fun and he was excited about it. After yeah, he, absolutely. Yeah. Towards it. yeah. <laughs> so I got a just a, a personal thing that kind of irritated me. So we, we were working hamburger tonight the other night, which holy cheeseburger! I don't. <laughs> we've never cooked so many cheeseburgers at a hamburger tonight. <laughs> I know. Right. But I've been talking about tonight's interview for quite some time, probably right. since we had it booked. Um. And I was telling some guys at the Shrine that, that have been Shriners since probably as long as I've been alive. And I said, yeah, we're going we're gonna to interview Eric Bensola Friday night. And they're like, who? <laughs> so how friggin' disconnected are you from your lodge that you don't know who Eric Bensola is? Like you... Am I, I that popular? Yes. Um, yes. Yep. All right. So, <laughs> so there's, it, it got me thinking about all these guys that that go to Blue Lodge, they get their master, and that's it. They're gone. They're in the shrine, which Nebraska has a unique situation where everybody's a shriner. And that's it. Like, once they join the shrine, they forget about Blue Lodge. A lot. Yeah. A lot do. Yeah. I mean, we have 10% of our lodge goes to a meeting. Right. You know? I mean, it is what it is. That's pretty normal. I mean, even Mercer, we have 174 guys, something like that. And, you know, our active membership is somewhere five, six, seven percent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same usual 10, 10 to 12 guys. Now, we've, we've started including our uh, guys that are going through the degrees into practices. And like, yeah. hey, we're going to have, we're going to put you as steward. You actually already know the lines. So yeah. it's like, we're, now we're going to teach you the floor work. And they, I, they like it because they, you know, the, the one of the worst things that you can do is like have a guy go through all that and just be like, eh, we don't have anything for you to do. Come join us. It's like, right. no, you got to yeah. put them to work. Yeah. And they right. do. And the, I would say the vast majority of them are like, yeah, no, I want to do something about this. I want to I want to do something. But um, that's a great idea because we've struggled to like, how do we keep the new members? You basically, you know, yeah. It, it, the thing is, is like, let them tell you they don't want to do it. Because we kind of, at some point, we have to also like, we have to help them figure out what it is they're trying to say mm -hmm. or what it is they want to do. And so you just try things out. Like, you know, we just were like, you know, let's just start putting them as stewards. And then I asked, hey, how do you, they're like, that was actually a lot of fun. I had a good time doing that. And I think that that's what they want. It's like they, they spent all this time learning about this and learning the questions and answers and whatnot, and they're ready to go to work. And so put them to work, you know, and we have, you know, when we do our breakfast stuff, we, Hey, come help us with that. And, you know, they help us with that. So anything that you do, just include them, including degree work. So, let me ask a stupid question because that's what most of mine are. So, <laughs> <laughs> if so, our, our brother Tyson, who is our entered apprentice, yep. mm -hmm. could could he be a steward for an entered apprentice for say game? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be a master mason to be part of the degree. No, you have to be a master mason, a, a master mason that's done his proficiency to be installed as an officer. Okay. But no, you can participate in the degree that you are that you have received so far. Okay. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. That'd be a great way to get these younger guys. Yeah, we had involved. a when we had a guy, a new guy come in. It was a friend of another guy that's a fellow craft right now, <clears throat> and so for his EA degree, we actually had his friend be the chaplain and read the, the Bible parts. That's awesome. So we always try to have some sort of connection, you know, whether it's the signers doing the conferral or a lecture or something like that. We try to move mm -hmm. guys around to kind of give a meaningful experience to the candidate. But yeah, you absolutely you can have them participate in that stuff, and that, that's it's another way to learn too. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. I like that. And if I'm wrong, then. Too bad. <laughs> no one has said no. You can't do that. No, I, I, I'm, I'm almost like ni I'm like 99 certain that as long as it's the degree that they're in and they know how to do it and they know they, they want to do it, go for it. So that would be. I'm just trying to think without I'll give anything up. So we would have to say if we're going to confer the EA degree, we have to open an EA. Mm -hmm. Right. But then yeah, everything would be 
fun. Mm -hmm. Yep. I like it. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, I think Tyson's going to end up being really yeah. good. Yeah, he's he's far too intelligent to be part of our lodge. <laughs> 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 Um, no, it, it's been nice seeing Beehive grow. Ever, you know, I, the first time I ever got there was in to, you know twenty twenty one when I did the middle chamber, mm -hmm. um, and uh, which boy, those columns were tall. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was not. You know, this is again. This is one of those things about the, 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 my point about like practicing in different places because I was like. <laughs> we have high ceilings, man. Yeah, and I'm already a tall dude. But, um, but no, it's been really neat seeing uh, everything that Beehive's been doing the last few years. Um, you guys being active and just really just getting after it, and it's really it, it's neat to see. It's really cool to see. Um, you know, there's a lot of lodges that are doing. You know, Omaha 288 is also doing that now. They're really stepping up and doing a lot of great things these days. Um, it's nice to see. Um, and see that happening and you know it's probably been happening for a long time maybe and i just now i'm seeing it but i just at least want to call that out so it's neat well, i don't know i think uh we were talking a few episodes ago about this younger generation kind of has a need to belong yes you know and i i think as long as we can get our fraternity out there i think it's a, it's a i mean i'm a little biased but i think it's a great place to belong yeah absolutely I, agree yeah. you know it, it, my grandfather's time when he was a mason you know uh, you didn't, we didn't promote ourselves, mm. you know, and uh, I think that's where some of that decline in, in membership mm -hmm. happened because uh, you had to ask a Mason to become a Mason, yeah. you know, and uh, so we didn't, we weren't out and about promoting ourselves and um, doing that a little bit more now. I think the, the younger generation saying, hey, that may be Something that I want to do, yeah. and I, so. so when Heath and I first got our our square and compass tattoos on our forearms, um, we did them as a father and son matching thing. Um, but I, I get a lot of weird, like "What the hell are you thinking?" kind of looks for that. I'm like, why, we're we're still guarding the West Gate. We're still doing background <laughs> checks. We're still doing investigation <laughs> committees. It's not. It's, this is not an advertisement, you know, to let everybody and their dog join the fraternity. Right. No, we were always guarding the West Gate. Yeah. But I, this is part of who I am, and I, I really don't give a shit who knows about it. There's a level of like marketing you still have to do. I mean, it's not let you know. I, I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea that we should be going around asking every able-bodied man, oh, yeah. right. should you be right. a mason? Because that that could that's a could be a recipe for disaster. Right. For sure. Right. I think you still have to make yourself available and provide public education to people about what Freemasonry is, you know, whether it's, you know, like with Mercer, when we do our BFF stuff, when we're serving the breakfast burritos, it's like it's an opportunity for people to come be in the public eye with Freemasonry or when mm -hmm. we have installations, making those open to the public. Um, you know, when we do, when the Grand Lodge does cornerstones, it's like, come see this. This is like the only stuff you get to see us do publicly. publicly so yeah. There is a level of marketing you still kind of have to do and i think you know to your point it's like if you don't talk about it then yeah you're going to run into a, a space yeah. where there are still guys that think like you know some guys would come to our fundraisers and stuff and they'd be like i know you can't say anything but uh like am i do how do, do i do i think i need to ask you and i'm like dude we can just sit and talk let's just go sit <laughs> yeah. down at the table and start talking about it right now you know and um yeah i i, I hope and we, we talked about that with the pr committee about like what are some ways that we can kind of get the message of masonry out with some educational stuff background behind it? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's not some misunderstandings about what people might be getting into. But at the same time, yeah, you got to watch out. You can't just take every single guy on yeah. the street. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's in the, yeah. And you got a square and compass tattoo. I've got the hat on. I've got a square and compass mm -hmm. on my car. And to me, that's also another thing. Yes, it's marketing, but it's like I want people to remember it's like, you are now a representative for Mason. Mm -hmm. You drive like an asshole. <laughs> yep. Everyone's going to be like, all Freemasons can't drive. <laughs> yep. you know, if it's yep. in Omaha, probably. But <laughs> like, oh, we're so bad at driving. This yeah, thing. Omaha. Uh, it's, I think oh, we're I think we're number one in the nation. Second right? year in a row. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like we can't win at Nebraska football, so we'll be we'll win at being bad drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, to your point, I mean that's uh, Gabe started asking me about Freemasonry. And I was like, the way I approach it is, I'll give them minimal information, tell them 
do some Googling. Do your own research with an open mind. Be prepared to believe about 5% of it. Come back to me with any questions you have, and I'll tell you what's bullshit and what's not. Mm-hmm. You know, if I, if I can. Right. Because you can find everything about the fraternity online. Yeah, yeah. you can. You can <laughs> you find really all can. of it. You don't know what's true and what's <laughs> not. But it's all out there. Yeah, and that's where sometimes we'll get guys that you know they they've done a bunch of research on Google, and then they're like, "Well, I, you know, I, I guess I just want to hear from a Freemason." And mm-hmm. so we'll say, "Okay, hey, can we, you know, there'll be four of us sitting around a table, and we'll just talk to them, and not only just like talk to them about Freemasonry, but it's also like, tell us what do you do? What do you? What's fun to you? You know, how do you feel about this? Mm-hmm. How do you think about that? Those types of not political or religious any step any of that stuff, but getting to know them, like what, how do they operate? Because um, then you can also kind of understand like how they're interpreting some of the information that they're, they're reading right. to. Yeah. And like that, that can help you out too. But um, yeah, I, I think, I think we can, well, I guess going back to one of the questions, like what something we could change, if we could and probably just the, not very good at being public. Not all the yeah, time. I agree. And, and I'm not talking about just being in parades and all that stuff that, mm-hmm. I mean, that's fine and everything, but I'm talking about like reasonably and with like some value of like, Putting Freemasonry out to the right. public. I mean that. I mean that is doing the work that we do, whether it's helping youth, which I'm very passionate about, or helping the community, or anything like that. Because it's like, yes, on the website it says men putting ethics into practice, and that's really important. Mm-hmm. It's you can learn all this stuff, you learn all the lectures, you learn all the ritual. But if you don't do anything about it, if you're not back in the community giving those things back, giving those talents to everybody else, you're just doing it for yourself. Right. Come you on. Know? So. Yeah, and there, there's definitely those guys in the fraternity too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, unfortunately, there are all types. Yeah, there are. And there, um, my dad always told me growing up, there's an ask for every seat. Everybody has a purpose, so we, sure. we need the guys that are more out for themselves. We need the guys that are selfless. I'm, I kind of fall somewhere in the middle, I guess. I mean, um, you have to have a little bit of self. You, you have to be a little bit about yourself to some degree because, you know, if you don't take care of yourself, how do you take care of somebody right, else? Right, there, right. There's a level of that, but it's a balance just with anything else. If you're only taking care of yourself, you know, then, you know, you're not taking care of anybody, anybody else. else. You right, know? right. Yeah. You'll find yourself alone really quickly. Yep. I know our workshop master this year is going to basically do an open house. So mm. with us at the Scottish Rite Building downtown, we're not in a residential yeah, community no you know but actually no, i think we kind of are it, we are and we are i mean but yeah so but uh we've got enough we're going to invite the businesses and so forth that are around us to understand what's going on in this building mm-hmm. next to them but in, uh two years ago across the street uh wells fargo converted their top two floors into apartments and mm. so there's residents were there and I know the the one petition that got read last night uh Jack, he was like three or four blocks, four blocks away. away you yeah. know so wow, okay. you know so uh, letting people know that we're here mm-hmm. you know we're, we're so. not just a building that gets tagged with anti masonic stuff right every two right years. <laughs> so uh, so that's something we're going to try different this year kind of an open house and then uh let us know who we are and what that what it is yeah, down I think there that'll so. be fun our producers telling us we need to take a break okay so we'll be back. <laughs> yeah, we're ready to go, <laughs> and we're back. So now, that was a great break. <laughs> I am so refreshed right yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Got off the rails. <laughs> uh, so we're going to open it up now, and we're going to let worshipful brother Eric just kind of run the show for a while. We discuss anything you like want to. Or, happen, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're not really known um, for our good judgment. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I, you know, there's one thing I wanted to say about like, um, about like, you know, people will say that masonry means, it means something different to everybody. And I think to a, to a degree, that's definitely true. I think there's a underlying premise with it with freemasonry you know what the grand custodian says it's pretty good it's it's you know we're the world's oldest fraternity of men that base themselves on the code of ethics of the builders of king solomon's temple now if you go to the public and say that they're gonna go what <laughs> what <laughs> yep. and so that's where it's like going back to kind of what i said earlier it's like okay now let's add men putting ethics into practice so it's mm-hmm. like we're taking all of these things that we learned and we're going to put them out into the world now, I, with the, the, the weird thing about masonry, at least in, from my experience, is that I don't think that it's 
it's one to one. I don't think that all of a sudden, like when I'm walking around out in the world, I, I'm like, ah, oh, yes, the plumb line or whatever it is. And I'm like, <laughs> I, yeah, I need to do that. Like, I don't think of it that way. Now it can act as a reminder, but I think that the point is, is that you go there to do the work to kind of ingrain that into your mind. And then yeah. also your brothers become your system of checks and balances right. too. Because yeah. you, you, you don't like when I, when I quit smoking, I think this year is going to be 13 years. I told my girlfriend at the time, I told my mom, I told everybody, Hey, I'm quitting. So don't let me smoke. There's a system of accountability there. So it's like, no matter where I went, I can't smoke, can't even do it. And then show up somewhere. Cause come to find out like, I never realized how often you smell like smoke when you smoke. <laughs> um, I thought, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go on a smoke break and I'll come back in and nobody will know. And it's like, no, oh, yes, it's like everybody that doesn't smoke is like, I can smell it, dude. Um, but that, 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 accountability, that accountability system is there. So, but the, it's the work that you do, and I think it's, you know, there's a variety of different ways to, uh, to learn the work, whether it's through education, through podcasts. I think it's a really, way, really awesome way to kind of learn. Because, you know, look, Am I a ritualist? Yes, I love ritual. I also love working with the youth. I also love doing fundraisers. I also love just having a good time and doing a lot of different things. But I think the way that I absorb and the way that like I kind of synthesize the teachings of Freemasonry is by doing the ritual. I think there's a, mm-hmm. there's a lot of value in it because you think about, you know, it's one thing to memorize the ritual and you have it in your head, but then when you start saying it, it almost sounds different than what you were reading. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a whole different experience, and I think that there there is there is a lesson there. There's a way to take that and then put that back out into the world because it's also kind of you're holding yourself responsible. Like me on the on Pike's Peak with Angie, it was like while it was kind of funny, it was also kind of scary. It was like, <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, I'm like fortitude. I'm like, uh, if if I'm still standing, I have enough energy to keep going. And right. so I don't know, you know, you know, I could hypothesize like I don't know that if I wasn't a Freemason, if I would have finished. I don't know how that would have ended. And that maybe that's a pointless question to ask. But what I do know is that that helped me finish. Right. It did have an effect on it. Um, so I guess, like, my big thing when it just comes to, like, I know there, there tends to be two different camps of, like, you either like ritual or you don't. I don't think that, I think it's a little bit more nuanced than that. Um, yeah. I don't think that, you, it has to be that way. I think there has to be a respect for it because that is the work. Right. That's what teaches us that thing. You know, um, it's just, you know, you take this, any story, the stories from any holy book, you don't always, you know, I'm not trying to be blasphemous, but it's like, you don't have to take them literally. If you actually just kind of think about what they're teaching you, that's the important part. There's a thing in Zen Buddhism that's very important. They talk about that. It's like the words point to the truth, but are not the truth themselves. And to me, that's what, that's how I see ritual and Freemasonry is that the ritual is important, but that's not the point. That's just the vehicle for me to go and do this other thing. Right, right. It gets, gets you to the horse tank. Yeah. But it's like you still have to have it. Just kind of like you can't teach somebody something for the most part without like using some words. Yeah. But it's like, don't hold on to the words. Hold on to the thing that the words are describing. Right. right. You know, right. Um, it's all about alluding to something else or the symbolism. That, yeah. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah. It, there again, even with religion, it's a, it's interpreted a little bit different by everybody, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's okay. And I think if, if somebody wants to get involved in Freemasonry and they do the work, they go through the proficiency, you know, and get to the end, and they're like, you know, I, yeah, I tried the tried the ritual thing, and you know, it's not really my thing, but I really like helping you guys with these fundraising events. I'm really good at this. I'm passionate about that. Or you know what? I, you, I even if they're like, you know what? I really would love to like, just kind of like do some historical research for the lodge and create something. Let them. Yeah. Let yeah. them do it. Let them go for it. If that's what they want to do, then let them do that because you got to have a nice mix. Right. Uh, you know, you got to be able to do a lot of different things. And while Mercer is very heavily a ritual lodge, we do a lot of other different things because we are all different people, mm-hmm. you know? Um, yeah, I think that that that's kind of the thing that I I, I wanted to kind of get out because I know there's there's some there's some tension sometimes about like well masonry can't mean different things to ever, to different people because it's just one thing it's like but it's the teaching is one thing but the teaching is not the end of it it's like saying that like I have all this knowledge I am now smart and it's like no you have a bunch of stuff you haven't yeah. done anything with it wisdom yeah. comes from your actions that you do with that yeah 
So I don't know. I, I preach about that often. Whether, yeah, whether I'm like meeting with Ethan and Kit, you know, the guy I kind of mentor, and or I'm talking to my best friend John Herbelsheimer, or, or my dog, one of them, <laughs> talking to them, you know. <laughs> Giving them all my, my, my little bits of wisdom and insight. Um, Judging and, by the Facebook post, he doesn't really appreciate listening, though. Yeah, Waffles, well, she just kind of looks in and she's just like, but are you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's really the only thing she's really concerned about is whether or not I'm leaving. So, um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, that, that's just, I, I think, yeah, it, it's, it, th that's the work. But it's like, that's the, those are the tools. It's not the end of the, it's not right. the, end of the game, right. you know. The journey is the goal. And the journey never ends. No, it doesn't. And it shouldn't. It's right. It really shouldn't. Right. You know, I, I think about, you know, barring elections, what's it going to be like after I'm Grandmaster? Now, for sure, I'm taking a year off. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I've watched the last few Grandmasters, and they're like, yeah, you're going to want a year off. Yeah. They're like, yeah, it's, it, you know, it can be tiring. Uh, it's a lot like of band camp gave you gray hairs. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Well, that's like, that was, a, that, I think that was part of the reason why I didn't, I wasn't like nervous necessarily about being offered that position. It was like, I felt, man, if I can do band camp, because that's a lot that's being in charge of, 250 people, the vast majority of which are kids, mm -hmm. and making sure they're safe and everything. I was like, ah, I can do it. I think I can do it. Like, I'm not, I don't mean that like in a, <laughs> if I can do band camp, I could do anything. Flippant way, but it was like, <laughs> if I can go get through that, I'm like, I can get through being a Freemason. Okay. Because being a Freemason is a lot more of me like doing the work and like being out there with the guys, whereas like camp was like behind the scenes, like got to run yeah. all this stuff, you know? So it's a little, that's more so what I mean. But um, yeah. Oh, Waffles. <laughs> Love that dog. That adorable dog. <laughs> oh, she's amazing. Yeah. French Bulldog, right? Uh, Frenchton. She's a mix between a Boston Terrier and a Frenchie. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. Yep. She's a, she's something else. Yeah, the Facebook posts are incredible. <laughs> They're awesome. I, you know, we had a, the, the dog we had before her toast. Um, I had <laughs> <laughs> Do we, we have a, a, a food <laughs> thing here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we actually had, we had porky, pickle, toast, waffles, and flaps. <laughs> uh, yeah. So and we've been, we've been, you know, we're, we've been talking about getting a third one, but you know, do dogs can be expensive. Fortunately, like for once now, we actually have dogs that don't really have any medical issues. Because toast had a bunch. She had like COPD and all sorts of stuff, and so it was like weird. But it was like. We were going to spend every last dime we had until she died. Oh, That's yeah. what we did. It was like, you, we're, it was never a thought in our mind of like, got to put her down at any point in time. We're like, mm -hmm. nope, what, how much does it cost? Doesn't matter. We're going to pay it, you know? Um, but that, uh, I forgot what I was going to say about toast, but um, she, uh, what, when we got waffles, we got waffles, actually Kevin Sheely, right? Worshipful brother Kevin Sheely. Had, I think he recommended or talked about or posted something maybe about York Animal Rescue because he's, you know, he's near that area. And so we that drove out to York on Angie's birthday and with toast with us and, uh, <laughs> and to get her, it did, we're, well, we met, met her. Her name was Francine. Oh, we're like, that's not going to do. <laughs> we're going to change that. And it actually, the, the funny thing was like, so eventually we're like, oh my God, she's got so much personality. This is going to be perfect. And so we're driving back home. And trying to figure out names, sausage, <laughs> pancake, like all these different things. And like, I, you know, my favorite author is David Foster Wallace. And so I was like talking to Angie and I was like, I said something about David Foster Wallace when I was like looking back at waffles and she goes, hmm? and I was like, waffles. And she goes, hmm? I was like, oh. <laughs> and so I jokingly call her David Foster Waffles sometimes. <laughs> um, and then Flapjack is Flapjack Kerouac. Uh, which is Angie's favorite author, but <laughs> so yeah, the names the names get a little out of control. But we had oh yeah, we had an Instagram account for for toast for a long time, awesome. Um, and it was it was called the Toast Post, and, <laughs> the toast post. <laughs> and it was really great. But then it was like when she died, like unexpectedly, you know, we kind of left it there. And then people were like, "You can do another one for waffles." I was like, "I don't know if I can do that again, man." I was like, "Just go to my page. Just go to my Instagram and look at <laughs> pictures of waffles." Yeah. at this yeah. point, but. Yeah, um, she's proficient. Or at least she's heard it. <laughs> you heard it all. She's heard it. She certainly heard it. Yeah. <laughs> she kind of half the time doesn't even. Um, I like voice inflection with her too, and she just kind of was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Okay." And then if I say outside, it's like what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But 
Yeah, some of the pictures you post is like you're totally getting the teenage eye roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she serious? does. She she is an angry teenager. When I get home, she starts barking at me. She comes over and just starts yelling and she's all <laughs> died side to side. She's just barking, barking, barking. I'm just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I left. Like she gets so mad. When Angie comes home, she's like, Yay. <laughs> and it's like, she's got daddy issues like this. So yeah, it's a it's it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> she's a fun experience. And then Flappy, Flappy is just like, oh, oh hey dad. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna be over here. You know? And Flappy's back legs, so they're both rescues. And so Flappy was a was a breeder release, and her back legs don't, didn't really. She has some problems; they're not very strong. So she's very front heavy. She actually like sits there after a while like this. We call it silver backing because she looks like a gorilla. Oh. <laughs> but her back legs sometimes they just bother her, so she can't sit normally all the time. So she'll actually sit on waffles while waffles is laying down. She goes, <laughs> and she does. She's like backs up and just goes. Burp. <laughs> right down on her. Yeah, pretty great. But no, I uh, I actually use my dogs often when I go and teach kids. So the whole like thing with you know working with youth for band camp, Rainbow, you know now I've been kind of working with DMLA guys. Um, all happened at the same time as like my energy education program for OPPD started. And so when I was teaching kids and whatnot, just learning like what kids react to and different things like that, I was like, oh, I can help teach about radiant energy by showing dogs in the, in the window because do- animals love the sun, you know, and like yeah. teaching them about yeah. that and like it get, gets them so engaged and whatnot. And um, so yeah, kids today had a blast about it. And they're like, you need to bring the dogs in. I was like, we will never get anything done. <laughs> like, but no, it's, it, it, you know, I, with the, I know I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, but with the youth thing, like, again, I, I wasn't trying necessarily to go and be like, we need to go help kids. I mean, I don't think anybody out there is like, screw those kids. I hope not. <laughs> right. But he is like, please don't be that way or be that way quietly away from everyone else. Yeah. Um, but it was just, it kind of, I mean, as somebody who doesn't have kids, I feel a little bit youthful and I always just still kind of act like a kid a lot of times. Um, and you know, when you talk to a dog, nobody ever talks to a dog with a regular voice. Right. You can't do that. It's, it's illegal. illegal. <laughs> it's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's like, so I've always had this kind of like, I, I just kind of, it, I like helping. I like being a part, but that's like, like I don't want to be, I don't want to just go, Hey, go do this. Hey, go do this. Hey, go do this. I want to kind of be in the mix of the thing. I'm like, let's do this together. Mm-hmm. And it just so happens that kids tend to smile more. They have more fun. They're more willing to do different things except for younger kids. Sorry, no offense. Um, <laughs> how old are you now? 21. Okay. You're, you're like, all right, that's fine. High school kids, they know everything. I did too when I was in high school. But then I, I, called, I called him Google while he was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> he still has a hard time believing daddy. Yeah, no, it, yeah. You, it's, you know, you get older, you come to find out your parents are actually kind of wise to some degree. Like you're like, oh, hmm. they were right. Yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to start a fight with you guys. Anymore. <laughs> Don't pretend like we haven't driven down that road. Yeah, yeah, right. But so it was just, you know, with kids that, that I, I had been talking to people about kind of like, you know, I really enjoy working with kids far more than I enjoy working with adults just mm-hmm. because kids, they want to do the thing. They want to have the fun. And, you know, I taught drumline at my high school after I graduated for a little bit. And I think there's a lot of joy in that. And it's kind of like, all right, I'll do it with you. And I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to do it to like, if I do this, we're going to get X, Y, and Z accomplished. It's like, this seems like the right thing to do, so I'm going to do it. Let's go and have this fun. Let's go do this thing. And, you know, I, I think about when I was a kid, I didn't really have a lot of uh, adult um, role models. Matter of fact, adults were not very nice to me in a lot of very different ways. Uh, who knows what they were going through? Probably something pretty bad. But um, sometimes I think in the back of my mind, I think about that. It's like, I think I kind of would have liked somebody to be youthful with me and somebody that I could look up to and maybe talk to and bounce ideas off of. Um, or just to sometimes just feel human. I think... Um, as adults, sometimes we, we, we can make the mistake of talking to kids like they are kids mm-hmm. instead of just realizing they're just humans that haven't been around that long. Right. And when you kind of just talk to them like they're just people, um, to a certain degree, like you can't talk to a five-year-old like they're 20, but to a certain degree. But if you just talk to them that way, like it, it, it really 
goes a long way. Mm -hmm. It goes a long way for them to feel normal, that whatever it is that they're going through, whatever thoughts that they're having in their head too, um, they're validated. Right. You know, it, it, the hardest part, I will say though, is trying to find the balance between giving advice, showing advice, and just shutting up. Because you get, like, I think about the times when I was a kid and people would be like, you're doing this wrong. And I'm like, but this is what's in my head. How do you know? Like, yeah. the, and then the, the, the terror of like, oh, I'm doing this thing wrong. Like my brain isn't working then. So now when I'm, I'll want to be like, go give a correction. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> tell me more about that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna turn this into a question instead. So it's like, it's very, it's a delicate place to be. Um, but as a Zen Buddhist too, also I'm more than happy to also just be like, all right, let's just not do anything. Let's just be quiet, you know, so. I need a little bit of that. It's, uh, Zen Buddhism is a lot more difficult than people think, but it's really helpful. And it's incredibly boring. <laughs> There's a lot of sitting and looking at the floor. I don't know if I can do that. But you'd be surprised. I tell you, you'd be surprised. I do like these nine minute sessions where I just sit and I stare at the floor. And then my timer goes off and I get up and go about my business. And it's nice ways to break up the day. But it's, it's amazing because then what happens is that on a really busy day, I find time for to do it. And by the end of the day, I don't feel exhausted because I actually stopped to, to, to do nothing. But yeah, it's, <laughs> there was a session I had one time where I did it for 30 minutes. And it's like, I was telling Ethan about it. And he goes, no, it's like three <laughs> minutes, maybe. maybe. And he's like, and that's if I'm going to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we should take your phone with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, it's a, uh, that's, yeah, I don't know. I could talk forever about youth and kids and philosophy and everything. But while it's not time limited, you know, we'll be here till midnight <laughs> <laughs> if you let me go too far. We can always have you back. We'll start, hey, we'll start that conversation. Yeah, happy to come back too. <laughs> It is, it is starting to get a little late, and you have to get up at, I don't know, like... 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> what for? Oh, boy. For Start work. work. Oh, you believe Lord. that? <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. It is. <laughs> How long till you retire? Three years. I'm calling it quits at 62. Three 62. years. All right. All right. So, getting there. Getting there. All right. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I still have a while. A while. 20. 20. No, 19 years. Yeah. 19 years. Yeah. Not until retirement age, just so you can retire from the company you work for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I still have twenty years till I can retire on Social Security. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool. So, Jason, you got any shout outs? Well, uh, shout out to the people listening. We appreciate it. Um, shout out to uh, our sidebar over here that. Uh, been keeping us peanut uh, gallery. yeah peanut gallery <laughs> making all the noise back there and uh just to say thanks to to eric for joining us it's been a wonderful experience and i've learned a lot just listening to him so I'm sure, as i'm sure we all have so appreciate it absolutely it's been a pleasure what a lot of fun my shout outs going to gabe yo uh yo <laughs> i said we're gonna we plan on doing a once he gets initiated we actually read Three petitions last night. Yeah, two, one uh, reinstate, one, one reinstatement, reinstatement, and then yep. and then two petitions. Very good. Uh, so maybe once we get those guys initiated, we'll get the the freshly entered apprentice perspective on on things. Uh, so that's my shout out. What you got Eric. All my rainbow girls, Vince and Diana, all the way through all the girls throughout the state of Nebraska. I just really appreciate what they do, and I think International Order Rainbow for Girls is a fantastic organization. It's really good for these girls, and I. I they keep me young. It's a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun with those girls. So. Cool. Uh, I'm going to shout out to the, the Tangier Clowns for their la our last podcast. They they uh, made the uh, podcast rather interesting at times. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and it was it was a little unorthodox for us. It was. It wasn't just us talking. It was just all. If you didn't watch it, it's kind of boring because it was all video. All video. Right. Yeah. But no, it was fun. Uh, Appreciated them letting us do that. We were kind of yeah. in their way most of the time, but yeah, it didn't go planned like we wanted to. We were hoping to do some well, we, interviews, but yeah. we found that we, we realized we were going to interrupt them too much. And so. Yeah, it was just you know I didn't want to. They were working with the kids, and yeah. they just felt 
like the wrong thing to do was to stop them. Hey, come here. I want to get you on camera. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you put a camera up by clowns. And oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Shiny lights. <laughs> but no, it was great to see them do their thing. Um, and now we know what to expect when we go back next year. Right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What's coming up? Was there anything we screwed up last year? Oh, Last I don't time we care about that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually don't think there was. Okay. <laughs> if, if there was, nobody nobody pointed it out to us. Yeah, huh? nobody's, okay. nobody's called us out on the carpet yet. <laughs> uh, let's see, Monday, March 18th, we have the Red Cross Blood Drive at Tangier. Uh, <laughs> the next day, we have uh, Tuesday, the 19th, is Tacos and Margaritas from 5 to 7. Or until they run out. Or until they run out. Yep. So if you want margaritas, you better. Yep. Get there early and drink them <laughs> fast, I guess. <laughs> uh, Saturday, March 23rd, we have, this is cool. Yeah. At the Scottish Rite uh, Center downtown, they're having the Native American Master Mason degree. From Oklahoma. From Oklahoma. Uh, is it the Indian Masonic Ceremony Team? I can't remember their official name. I think it's the Master Mason Indian Degree Team. Yeah. The Oklahoma okay. Okay. Master Mason Indian Degree yeah. Team. Yeah. I think is what it is. Yeah. Um, starts at one and they're breaking at like five o'clock or so for dinner. <laughs> um, I understand that half of it is in Native American regalia. Yep. Uh, so that'll be. And it's open to the public. So anybody's yeah. welcome to come in and I think, it's, it, so. I think it's 35 bucks. That includes yep. the degree and dinner. And dinner. Yep. Yeah. The first part of it. Is. Yes. Not yeah. The actual degree right. Part. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You never know. Right. You might be like, yes. <laughs> I get the secrets. Illuminati. I get to see the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. No, I didn't know Native Americans were in the little naughty. <laughs> uh, uh, and then March 29th, uh, Shrine Bowl is having their Shrine Bowl unit, not Shrine Bowl Inc. Right. Shrine Bowl unit's having their annual fish fry from 3 to 7 at Tangier Shrine. Good stuff. Yeah, it's been, I think this but their sixth year. Is it already? Yes. Wow. wow. <laughs> nice. Um, so, yeah, that's upcoming events, unless somebody's got something else to add. And then know? our comedy night, we've got also on the 23rd of March. Why don't you have that on there? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make it. <laughs> so, yeah, the Cruising Cushions got uh, Megan Malone as the opener and Tyler Walsh as the headliner for comedy night. So, come out and cool. Yep. Fifteen dollars a person and that gets you your first drink. So where's that yep. at? Tangier yeah. Shrine oh, Center. Tangier, okay. Yeah. Yep, it's on Tangier's calendar. It's on uh, I think the, the studio has shared it on their Facebook page, Cruising Cushions. Those are spelled with K's. Yep. Cruising Cushions. You can search them on Facebook. Or who did that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a fun event, it's a great fundraiser. Um, the comics are pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, other than that, I don't think you got anything, Bubba. Oh yeah. Good thing. See, that's why you're pretty sure. <laughs> uh, we have some comments. Uh, this is, I'm just going to call them out by name. This is uh, this brother, Jonathan from, I just happened to know he's in Nat Hunter Lodge. Uh, Jonathan Wright, he says, fantastic podcast brothers. Um, this one has your picture, but it's not you. <laughs> what? Yeah, YouTube's doing. It's got your picture on that one too. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, at, at John Oliver, nineteen eighty six, uh, <laughs> says, "Good job, Chop. Thanks for being a Nebraska Mason and all you do. Thanks for representing Weeping Water and Euclid number ninety seven." Uh, and then we have this one, and here's where you could maybe go down the conspiracy rabbit hole. Um, we've come to the decision that we have to take this for face value. Um, this is from at Herb DeLarge8784. He says, thanks for this, guys. You've convinced me to try and join a local lodge in the UK. It's my first time tuning in. I had a near-death experience last year due to drugs, and I've had a rocky life. I've been really trying to better myself and find God again, and I feel like the Brotherhood of a Lodge would do more, do me wonders in righting some of my wrongs. So, like I said, taking that for face value, you know, if it's if it's legit, I'm glad we made I'm a difference. I, I think a, a lodge is a fantastic step. Yep. 
and I'm I'm sure that they would be glad to have you. Agreed. Th this one is from you, but it doesn't and have yeah, your but picture. But it doesn't have my picture. On it. <laughs> <laughs> Neither does the other one. No, yeah. I got some super person on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so this one is from at Eric Ben Sala. I'll have to guess who that is. Huh. Um, said, "Ladies at the table is a table lodge, but with our ladies joining us. Table lodge is just for masons. Same structure, eight scripted toasts, but open for other ones." but without any secrets of masonry involved. So you can go to it, but you're not getting the secrets. Great. <laughs> uh, Mercer's been doing them for years now. We loved it, and our ladies look forward to it, too. Highly recommend. I believe there's a Table Lodge manual available for purchase from the Grand Lodge. Only costs $1. Nice. Is that what it is? <laughs> so, yep. Yeah, we have a PDF of it now, so. <laughs> for free. For free. Yeah. Woo -hoo! Actually, I think we might even have the ladies at the table one. It is. Yeah. We did it for the first time last year, and actually, uh, Austin this year has decided we're doing Get it again? much yes. earlier. Well, it's yeah, so much fun. And, well, the, and the ladies enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. we, we yeah. Asked, you know, yeah. For, so yeah. Um, what else do we have? What the heck is this? Oh, we were looking at my, the picture. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we have started a Patreon account um, for three dollars. We have three, three. Well, I guess there's four levels because you can be a free member. <laughs> Um, so for $3 a month, um, we appreciate your donation. Thanks <laughs> for, <laughs> for $5 a month. We're going to, we're going to, uh, say we have another $5 a month, uh, sponsor. And for $7 a month, we're going to mention your name, brother Eric Ben Solomon. Where's my brother Eric Ben Solomon? <laughs> Um, but also with the $7 a month, it's a recurring charge on Patreon. I'm not sure if everybody knows how it works because I didn't before. Um, you just enter your bank card information and then just bills your card once a month. But with that $7, it also gets you in on a very exclusive group chat with the host and the producer. It's very bougie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you just you can't find this kind of stuff everywhere. Everywhere, no. I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, other than that, uh, leave us a message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna rewind that one. Yeah, yeah. Keith, just hold it back. Uh, uh, send us a message on YouTube. Leave a comment. Spotify. Uh, smash the like and subscribe buttons. Send us an email. Studio three five seven podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Studio 357 Masonic Podcast. Send us a message on Messenger. Leave us comments on Facebook, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you want to advertise with us, we're still going to take your money. It's always going to happen. <laughs> um, and actually, yeah, never mind. <laughs> I'll keep that secret of masonry with me. Yeah. <laughs> Not actually. <laughs> um, other than that, I guess uh, that's kind of our show. So hope All you guys right. enjoyed it as much as we did. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Eric. We're going to have to definitely have to do this again. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. It's only going to be like another six months before I have any spots open up. So it's all right. We'll get there. <laughs> I'll find something specific to talk about. I, I kind of like where it went everywhere. Well, yes, it's true. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> that's great. very interesting. Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, until next time, travel well, baby. Travel I mean, well. All right. <laughs> travel well, brother. <laughs>